Hello everyone, Michael Shamblum here, and in this new tutorial, I'm gonna teach you how you can process your Milky Way photography using Adobe Lightroom. And with that, let's go ahead and dive in. So here's a night sky image I took with the original A7S camera, which is actually still one of my favorite cameras for shooting the night sky. It still does a great job. Uh, you can see here, I have my ISO all the way at 12,800. If you're using another camera like a Nikon or a Canon camera, you might consider putting that ISO a little lower. The Sony a7S seems to handle things really well at this high of an ISO. You'll notice I don't have any lens settings here. That's because I'm actually manually adapting the Nikon 14 to 24. So I was using this at about 24 millimeters and I was shooting f2.8. Um, for my shutter speed, I'm using a nice 15 second exposure to get all of this detail here. Now, the first thing I do with my Milky Way photography is usually start adjusting the white balance. Now, what I've found is by cranking the sliders here, it the, the, the effect is a little too extreme. So what I'm going to do is actually click on the number here where it says 4,800. And I'm going to use the number keys on my keyboard to adjust this. And I think it would be nice to kind of cool off the image a bit more. I want I want some of those blues in the sky. I still do want to retain some of these warmer tones in the Milky Way, but I feel like the sky is a little too warm at the moment. So I'm just going to cool this off. And you can see just clicking the number key a few times does a pretty extreme effect. I think I'm going to add a bit of magenta here. Only a few notches will do. And then we'll probably go back and readjust the white balance after we do some different contrast adjustments and some different effects here. I always find that taking down the highlights does help with the detail in the Milky Way. You can see as I bring that down, you start to see a bit more detail in the core. I don't want to be too extreme with it, but that should work out nicely. I'm going to bring in a bit of the shadows. We're going to bring up the foreground a lot more here, but we want to do some of these adjustments selectively. So I'm trying to be subtle to start. Sometimes I find with night sky photography, adjusting the whites is a nice way of adding contrast to the image. So I'm just going to bring the whites up here. And then I'm going to also bring up the blacks. All right, so these sliders down here, texture, clarity, dehaze. You need to be very careful with these sliders. They can help, but you need to use them usually selectively. Uh, texture, I almost never use. I find that it always degrades the quality of the image, but clarity I do use from time to time. My kind of rule of thumb for this stuff is anytime you're not sure what a slider is going to do to the photograph, just crank it all the way. It's a great way of just seeing what exactly what that slider is going to do. So you can see cranking the dehaze all the way adds a lot of blue to the sky, adds a bit of contrast. I personally don't think this is going to help for our image. And I don't really use the dehaze for Milky Way much. But clarity, on the other hand, if we bring this up, you can see there are some benefits to using the clarity slider. There's a little bit more detail in the water we can bring in. There's a lot more detail of the core of the Milky Way we can bring in with the with the clarity slider too. But again, we want to use this selectively. So I'm going to not use these for now, and we will revisit them later with either a brush tool or some sort of selection. I do like to bring in some colors into the Milky Way. Um, I find that Vibrance works really well as a more selective way of adding color instead of just bumping the saturation all the way. Sometimes I'll use a slight mixture of both, but I like a nice colorful Milky Way. This is subjective. You might like a more desaturated Milky Way. There's definitely Milky Way and night sky photography I see out there that I find to be a little overboard. I try and find somewhere in the middle where you're retaining those beautiful galactic details, but you're not pushing it to an extreme level. The tonal curve is a great way of adding contrast to the image. And I find that you have a bit more control by bringing the shadows down here and maybe bringing up the highlights than you do by just using the contrast slider. And then color grading, which is a fairly new tool. Um, it was released in the last few years. And I actually do enjoy this tool for bringing in some colors into the photograph. I tend to like a nice cool tone for the shadows of my images and then brighter 
uh, warmer highlights. And you can do that here. So if we pull this little circle away from the middle into a color, you can see that the highlights start to become that color. So if we do want a nice warm, maybe peachy tone for the highlights, we can bring it in right here. You can also adjust the luminance of that. So you can see when I bring that up, it actually increases a bit of the contrast. And then shadows, you can bring in some blue here. And we can adjust those. And we can adjust the contrast as well. And if you're ever curious what you're doing, you want to look at the before and after, just click the backslash key right above enter. And that'll show you your before and after. I like where this is going. I'm going to move down to the detail slider. I think usually with Milky Way photography, it's, it's almost always sharp enough, especially having the specular highlights and details of the stars. They always come out really sharp. So if you bring in more sharpening, it might just increase the noise and make it look a little bit compressed. So I usually leave the sharpening alone for my Milky Way photography. But I do crank the noise reduction quite a bit. And I find the sweet spot for a lot of these images is around 30 to 35%. If you go too far, you notice that the image starts to look like a cartoon painting. This is when you know you've gone way too far with the noise reduction. Um, I'd say even 50% we're starting to lose some of the detail here. So for me, something like 30. We can still see the detail. You want a little bit of noise in there too, so that's fine. Um, now, as far as noise reduction, there are other tools that you can use besides Lightroom. I know a lot of people love the Topaz Labs plugin for uh, noise reduction. I personally don't use it a lot myself. I do own it, but for most of my images, I find that Lightroom does a pretty good job with the noise reduction. One thing you'll notice about Milky Way photography is sometimes you get some color banding and color noise. If you are getting that in your night sky photography, you can actually bring up this slider right here, the color noise slider and the smoothness, and that helps to blend in some of the colorizations in the shadows. Like if you see, sometimes it's a cyan colorization or a magenta colorization. These two sliders right here are gonna help you with that. All right, from there, we're gonna remove chromatic aberration, which is the little edge fringing you usually see in the areas of tonal contrast. I don't really have it for this image, but it takes one click to just press that button. And then our profile corrections. If you have a native lens on your camera, this will show up. But for me, since I am adapting a manual lens, we're just gonna click on that Nikon 14 to 24 manually. I guess I didn't really do a crop for this image. Personally, I, I don't think it needs a crop. It seems pretty level, but if you do have an issue with your horizon or you wanna crop the image, the crop tool is right here. But Masking is what we're going to click to do our selective editing. So right here, we have a bunch of different options. You've got all the options you had in the previous versions of Lightroom. Luminance, color range, radial gradient, linear gradient. We can use all of these. But one thing that I do find really nice now in the new Lightroom is the Select Sky button, which I know has gotten a bad rap in Photoshop for being a sky replacement tool, but it's really handy here in Lightroom for just making that sky selection. If we just take the exposure down, you can see it does a pretty phenomenal job at selecting the sky. There is one thing that I do to this filter every single time I apply it to make it a little bit more natural though. The one thing that I personally like to do is subtract using another gradient from the horizon just to soften that edge a bit. I'll show you what I mean here. So. Let's go ahead and increase the contrast of the sky. Maybe we can take the exposure down, bring in the whites. Just start to pop the Milky Way. Bring in some magenta here. And we could even bring in some clarity now that it's just being applied to the sky. So from here, we want to go with this subtract from mask button. So as we click on this thumbnail, we get the little minus icon. We can then take 
a linear gradient. And I'm going to bring the linear gradient in from the water up through the sky. And if we now click on that, you can see it still has the selection, like we still have the selection around this rock face, but in the sky, we're getting that soft gradient. So a really helpful way of working with this filter. If you don't apply a subtraction to the sky filter, it almost always is gonna look really, really unnatural. So make sure to apply that when you're using this technique. Now, another technique we can use with Select Sky is actually doing the inverse of this mask. So right here, we're targeting the sky with this red adjustment. And if we right click on this invert mask, now we have our target selection for just the foreground. So we can work on the sky and foreground separately using the targeting sky mask. So I'm gonna bring the blacks up a bit, bring in more contrast. I actually do think a bit of magenta back into the foreground should help. Now I am noticing as we're adding more contrast here, maybe the color grading we did here was a little bit extreme. So I'm just gonna check up on this and I might make the highlights more towards orange and make these shadows a bit more towards like a violet tone. And that's one thing to consider when you're working on these Milky Way images or really any of your photography. Never be afraid to go back on an edit and readjust it. That's the beauty of Lightroom where you can always go back on what you're doing if you find it's not working for the photograph. All right, I think this is looking good so far. I wanna add more contrast to the sky darken the sky a bit more. I don't really want to darken the horizon. I really like what's happening with the moonlight on the horizon and some of the brighter tones out here. So it's more about maybe creating a nice gradient that targets the top of the sky. So I'm going to use a linear gradient here, pull it from the top. And just give some darkness to the sky there. And now I'm gonna make one more that's a brush tool. And I wanna make sure the feather is all the way on this brush tool. And this one's just gonna target the Milky Way here. Now you'll notice I am going into that rock face a little bit. We're gonna work on that and adjust it so that it's not affecting the, uh, the ground. But with this, I'm gonna try and bring some detail into the Milky Way just by adding more contrast. Maybe even more saturation. I wanna then subtract from this mask right here. And we can do it the same way we did before by selecting the sky. But with that sky selection, I wanna invert it. And now you can see we have that adjustment that's just targeting this area of the sky and excludes the rock face. But again, we're making that subtraction by using select sky and then inverting it. Now we can keep using some different brushes and kind of color the Milky Way, like this little bit of magenta in there is really nice. Um, we're gonna use the brush tool for that. Again, very small size. And I'm gonna take the saturation up, bring in a bit of the tint, and brush along this area that should be more magenta. And we can do the same with pretty much any color in the photograph. So if we wanted to bring out some of these blues more, we could change the temp a bit, bring in some of the saturation, and then just brush along here. You just wanna be subtle about some of these adjustments. Don't go extreme, don't go overboard. And I'm gonna do one more brush selection and this time I'm gonna bring up the clarity, the contrast, and this one's gonna be for this area of the core right here. I want 
to punch these details a bit more. I'm going to create a bit of a soft vignette here just to see what it'll do to the image. Something very subtle. I'm just kind of pulling the viewer into the photograph. All right, so this is looking pretty good. I think I'm going to cool off the white balance more. I feel like more of that deep blue in the sky would look nice. Again, I'm just tapping once on the number key because you can see how far that adjustment really goes. All right, so I won't go too much further with the colors here, but I did want to show you a trick and technique that can help for this type of photography. So you can see here there's some green in the sky. That's not a camera error or anything weird like that. That's actually called air glow, and it does show up occasionally in night sky photography. Um, some people really like it and think, oh, it, it's going to, you know, it makes the image look great or other people don't like it and want to remove it from the photograph. I'm going to show you how you can either accentuate it or you can take it down. And we can use these targeted color adjustments for that. So here's each color that we have in the photograph. We've got our reds, our oranges, yellows, so on. Um, and we can adjust the hue of each color, the saturation of each color, and the luminance of each color. This color right in here is a kind of a combination of green, yellow, and aqua. So if we take the hue here of green and we bring that down or we bring it up, you can see just how far we can accentuate that. So, you know, bringing the green up, we can also bring aqua, yellow, then we bring the saturation up on it. It really pushes that air glow out. It boosts it up and makes it a, a stronger part of the photograph. Now on the opposite end, if you wanted to remove that air glow, you would, you would do the exact opposite. You would take this down, probably push the yellows a little bit more towards orange, and with green you could take down that saturation. All right, so I think that looks pretty good, and honestly for a single exposure using just Lightroom, really happy with the results we got here. But yeah, I really hope some of these techniques helped you. If you want to learn more techniques, make sure to check out the Milky Way Made Easy course link in the description. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, and as always, really appreciate you watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.